Welcome to Jet Black Coaching Indoor Trainer Tech Video. Hopefully watching this video will help you understand the terms and techniques endorsed by the Jet Black Coaching team. Once you have watched this video, you'll be set to go online and download some of Jet Black's valuable training sessions. This will not only help motivate you, but give you great gains in your riding abilities. Also check out our free training zone session. Here, we put you through a test to help you establish your training zones and helping you train smarter. Smart training, motivating sessions, awesome Jet Black coaching advice and products equals nothing but improvements. Note the rider in this video is riding a Jet Black Dyno Power Trainer. A fluid trainer with a digital readout giving data such as power, cadence, heart rate and speed, giving you averages and maxes on all the features. Check out our product site for all our trainers and products. Okay, the following is a brief description of techniques and terms used by the Jet Black coaching team. First, for the gearing intensity levels we suggest, this will depend on the trainer type you're using and the intensity settings. On the bike it's simple. In the front, there is a large chain ring and a small chain ring. If you have three chain rings, use the middle and the large rings. As for the back gears, it's simple. One is the hardest gear, going up to 10 or 11. Throughout our MP3 sessions, we'll give you simple terms like go to S4, that's a small chain ring in the front and four up on the back, or L3, that's a large chain ring in the front and three up on the back. The gearing suggestions are just that, suggestions. So train smart and work to your cadence and the intensity levels we set. While we have your attention on gearing, we see a lot of riders using what we call the extreme gears. Here, take a look at what these gears do to your chain line. Also the tension it puts on your derailers. Another problem is shifting away from these ratios. You're in for dropping your chain or breaking something. So when approaching a hill, adjust your gears early so you have plenty of range to work with. Cadence is an important part of our training. A low cadence is 65 to 75 RPM, and we consider a high cadence to be 120 plus RPM. For our intensity scale, we keep it simple. One is an easy ride, and 10 is a maximum effort. 7.5 to eight of your maximum should be around your anaerobic threshold. Simple, stay in your zones, train smart, and you'll get the best out of these sessions. If you have trouble with bouncing on your seat when using a high cadence, try this. Slide slightly forward on your saddle. This will change the angle of your pelvis. Tilt your heels up slightly. Bend the elbows facing the ground and hold strong through your core. This should hold you stronger on the bike when using a high cadence. When pedaling, we ask you to keep your heels nice and flat. Most of us naturally lift our heels to 25 to 30 degrees. An optimum level for a shoe or foot while pedaling is 15 degrees. Remember, when you had someone set your bike up, the person adjusting the bike would have set it to a 15 degree shoe angle. In the video, you can see the difference. If your foot is not at the right angle, your leg is not getting the full extension needed to produce maximum power. When your cadence is low, it is easy to pedal correctly sitting in the centre of your seat and with a constant cadence. But at a higher cadence, riders tend to lift their heel and slide forward in the saddle. This is okay if you adjust your handlebar position to maintain good form and stability on the bike. Another technique we use is scrape the floor, kick the door. Keep your heels nice and flat across the bottom of the stroke, lifting your ankles slightly as you pull up and kicking the door. From 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Push the heel flat again, scrape the floor, and repeat. The top position in the middle is for climbing and low cadence. On the brake hoods, relax your hands. Don't grip tightly, or it can cause the elbows to flare out and create bounce and upper body movement. We want to keep our elbows in and face them to the floor. This creates stability in the hips and core and allows the legs to do all the work. The handlebar drops are for sprinting and the real aggressive stuff. Good technique on the indoor trainer makes for good technique on the road. On the road, you don't look down. 
What happens when you look down on the indoor trainer? Your whole body collapses. The difference between a pro rider going hard out and an amateur is shown by their control on the bike. If you can achieve this on the indoor trainer, you too can take it onto the road and look like a professional. So keep all the energy in the lower body only. Everything else should be relaxed with a nice pedaling technique and you will look like that pro as well. Simple leg training is a great way to even out your pedal stroke. The best way to start is for technique use only. You can build in strength and power later on. Relaxing the foot on the back of the trainer keeps your hips and knees square on the seat as if you had both feet in the pedals. If you have to put your foot out to the side or on a chair, your hips are out of position. Then you are not doing what you would on the road. For variations, you can use bigger gears, a higher cadence, or simply change your position on the bars, going from the top bar to the drops. Closing the working angle of the hip flexor definitely makes it harder work. The coaching staff at Jet Black Coaching recommend all hill work on the indoor trainer should be done seated, as doing work out of the saddle on the indoor trainer only brings about poor technique, which may cause problems later. We all know how much we use the bike while climbing out of the saddle while maintaining minimal upper body movement. With the bike being locked in on the trainer, the technique is opposite. Saying this, we'd like to take the opportunity to show you an efficient way to climb out of the saddle. I see so many riders standing directly above the saddle or bottom bracket. Here you can see when the pedal is at the bottom of the stroke, there is quite a bit of time you have your weight directly on the top of the pedal stroke, making your power stall or rely on momentum. If you practice moving your pelvis forward over the bottom bracket, you will find the dead spot disappears and you will maintain a more efficient pedal stroke. Look at the difference. Stand tall and try and knee your bar. Give it a go. It takes practice, but you will feel the difference climbing, just like the pros. Thanks for viewing, and I hope you enjoy the sessions we have for you at Jet Black Coaching. Go to www.jetblackcycling.com.